Hi everyone, my name is Mike Lang and I'm an education consultant with Cancer Control Alberta, as well as being a cancer survivor myself. When I began my own radiation treatments, I had already finished six months of chemotherapy. And although I had become familiar with the cancer center, I was still nervous when I walked into the radiation treatment room for the first time. So if you're watching this video and feeling the same way, just know that it's normal. And also know that by watching this video, you're starting off on the right foot. Everyone's cancer experience is unique with different treatments and side effects, but that doesn't mean we can't learn from each other's stories. In this video series, we'll hear from two people who were diagnosed with cancer, Jerry and Charlotte, about what radiation treatments were like for them. You will also hear from a variety of other healthcare professionals about their role on your care team. Through these videos, you will learn more about how to prepare for radiation treatments, what they might look like, and some of the potential side effects you could experience. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. My name is Jerry Davis. Uh, I just turned 74 in April, this past April. Uh, I was diagnosed uh, almost 19 years ago with uh, non-small cell uh, lung cancer. One of the things is it took a long time to find it because the tumor was hiding behind a rib. So it took three months before they found out I had lung cancer for sure. My name is Charlotte. Uh, I have grade three anaplastic astrocytoma, or brain cancer, if you want to call it a simple name. Um, so I was at my soccer game. I remember feeling like I kept running in a circle. And then all of a sudden, I, so I felt quite disoriented. Uh, I went to go put my left hand up to my face. I just remember shaking. And then I remember nothing else after that until I woke up. I was diagnosed in October of 2013, went through six weeks of radiation. No idea what uh, radiation really would be. Radiation uh, treatment is essentially uh, uh, similar to surgery, except that we don't have to operate on patients to, uh, to help control the disease where it happens to be. Radiation treatments are radiation just like x-rays or CT scans are. So you know when you have a CT scan or an x-ray, you don't feel anything. And the same thing is true with a radiation treatment. Cancer cells are are really stupid in comparison to the rest of the cells in your body. They don't really know how to fix themselves very well. So by damaging them just a little bit, your normal cells that may get damaged as well can fix themselves, whereas the cancer cells don't fix themselves very well. So you just, you just keep hitting them a little bit at a time and a little bit at a time, and they'll die off, but the rest of your body is able to persevere and, and overcome that. We can use radiation treatment to try to cure people from a cancer. A fair number of times what we're doing, however, is we're trying to use radiation treatment to help people with their suffering from the cancer, but not cure them from it. Because there's lots of different ways to deliver radiation to a patient. There's uh, from something we call external beam radiation therapy. So that's using linear accelerators and it's kind of what it sounds like. It's coming external to your body. So the machine will maybe turn around you and then shoot radiation from a whole bunch of different angles. On the other side of external beam radiation therapy is what we call brachytherapy. And it's where we uh, insert uh, radiation sources right into the tumor and it irradiates basically from the inside out. The question I've been asked sometimes is whether um, if you're getting uh, radiation treatment this means that you have to worry because you're radioactive. For external beam radiation treatment, the answer is no. When you get external beam radiation treatment, you're never radioactive and you can go home and be with your babies, your you know, pregnant wife, whomever. Now with brachytherapy, that sometimes is not the case. So it's important if you are getting brachytherapy to have that, that discussion with your doctor. So when you and your oncologist decide that you're going to proceed with radiation treatment, part of what your oncologist will talk to you about is um, how many treatments this radiation will be uh, given to you in. Sometimes we give it in one treatment, sometimes we give it in many treatments. Typically it's one treatment a day uh, and for most treatments uh, we are giving the treatment sort of every consecutive working day if you're doing two or more treatments. Each treatment is typically only a few minutes of your day. Radiation itself is typically a very isolated type of treatment. Unlike chemo which is more of a systemic and goes throughout the entire body, Radiation therapy is very specific to where we are treating. So if we are treating the right arm, general reactions will be isolated to that right arm. I really emphasize that you ask for help uh, throughout your treatments whenever you feel the need or when you feel that, you know, there's something that you cannot complete yourself. If there's anything odd, different, something that you're not expecting, something that 
is not routine for you, then that should be something that you explain to your healthcare provider. So if you're not sleeping well, if your bowels are not moving well, um, if you're having fevers, and all of these are things that are not ordinary for you, then you need to be speaking to your healthcare provider, either the nurse, the radiation therapist, or the physician. People are not the same. People have different stages of cancer, they have different types of cancer, and their ability to tolerate uh, different treatments can also vary. So when your oncologist is meeting with you, they will be coming up with a customized radiation treatment plan. And you may see that there's a difference in uh, how many treatments you get or what specific way you're getting treated, but you should have confidence that that has been done taking in all the information about your individual case. It's normal for people to be nervous when they come to the cancer center. They're afraid of what they're going to hear, what we might recommend that they, you know, that they should do. Um, and I think it's important for uh, patients and families to understand that this is not a one-way street. We expect that there are going to be questions about why we're re making the recommendations we're making. We want you to be giving us information that you think might affect the decisions um, you know, together that we're making around the treatment choices. Um, and certainly at the end of the day, the decision is your own. We make the recommendations, um, but the choice is entirely yours as to whether you, know, you choose to do treatment or not. You're in charge of your body and you have every right to find the answers to all the questions you have. And don't be afraid to ask. There's no such thing as a stupid question. The only stupid question is the one that's not asked. You're not alone, but it is your own journey. Um, whether it's the people around you, whether it's yourself, whether it's your healthcare team, find those people um, that can give you the strength you need when those moments where you can't be as strong as you want to be um, and let them help you and seek out that help. I love how both Jerry and Charlotte emphasize that we can be active participants in our own cancer experience by asking for help and communicating clearly with our healthcare team. We'll hear more of their stories later, but I think another important thing to take from this video is that each person's treatment plan is made specifically for them. Radiation treatment is only one method that doctors use to treat cancer, and it can be used in combination with surgery or chemotherapy to cure, control the growth or spread of cancer, or to improve someone's symptoms and quality of life. There can be a lot of fear tied to the word radiation, but at the cancer center, it doesn't have to be scary. There are lots of good people to guide you through the process and answer any questions you may have. So that's it for this video. I'll see you soon.